The Eel River is one of California's largest rivers, spanning 3,500 square miles from the Snow Mountain Wilderness and the Mendocino National Forest all the way to the coast. The river is also the ancestral and current home of the Wiat, Sinkione, Lasik, Bangado, Yuki, and Wailaki people. The Eel River has been the backbone of our community and it supports a, a whole ecosystem of the things that we need to, to be supportive of our families. It's, it's a great part of each one of us. For anglers, the eel is really a special place and holds a special place in our hearts. It used to be one of the most productive salmon rivers in California with Chinook runs up to 800,000 fish and in, in good years, all the species combined up to a million fish, which is really incredible. The eel's thriving ecosystem was drastically altered with the construction of the Cape Horn Dam in 1908 and the Scott Dam in 1922, together known as the Potter Valley Project. These dams decimated culturally and economically important fisheries for indigenous people, destroyed critical habitats and spawning grounds, and caused a proliferation of invasive species and toxic algae. You know, one of the unfortunate things with this project is it was built in a time where we just didn't do environmental review or, you know, talk to the tribes before this project was built. So it was really built in a, in a different time by, by different people that didn't have the same values we do now. The Potter Valley Project as it exists today is no longer economically viable. It no longer provides the reliable water supply that people need, nor does it provide habitat for salmon or steelhead. And future droughts and climate change are only going to make matters worse. So we know the headwaters, even in the last several drought years, have cold water year round. For fish, it's super important to have that cold water habitat so they can make it through their first summer of life. It's also a relatively well protected upper watershed. It's in Mendocino National Forest. A lot of it borders wilderness. Much of the lower Eel River is protected as well. So it's really a chance to make a salmon stronghold and a refuge for these fish as climate change progresses. Now, with PG&E's recent decision to surrender their license to operate both dams, there is an enormous opportunity to reconnect what would become California's longest free-flowing river. So ultimately, where we're at in this project really comes down to PG&E and what they decide to do with these dams. You know, and our hope is they'll decide to get them out of the river, you know, because of the significant damage that they cause. And if water users decide they still want to keep a water diversion, we're more than willing to work with them on a way to do that that no longer harms the Eel River, you know, certainly not in the way that these dams have, have caused harm over the last hundred years. The Federal Energy Regulatory Commission, or FERC, needs to hold PG&E to account and require them to fully remove the Scott and Cape Horn dams as a vital part of their decommissioning process. Failure to do so would only exacerbate the ecological crisis already at play. This is the chance of a lifetime. You know, it's, it's our one big opportunity to get these dams out of the river. Uh, you know, we have a company that's being semi-cooperative about not wanting to operate this project anymore. And we really hope that they'll be making the right decision here and, and proposing dam removal as part of their decommissioning plan.